guys. Do you know the former Mars Hill pastor that failed at his last church and now he's failing at his new church? He abused me. Mark Driscoll. And I'm really sad and depressed. No, just kidding. I'm not. Okay, so everyone telling me that I am, I'm really not because Mark's a weak man and he really thinks that he was doing something by having a pastor come and yell at me and lock me in an office. Yeah, sure, for any other 15-year-old, that'd be traumatizing. But, you know, for me, Mark, you can't scare me. And, uh, you know, he's just a school bully that has people do everything for him. And that's why he had Pastor Brandon Anderson come and lock me in an office instead of him doing it himself. And before we start, for anyone saying that any of this story is false, it's too stupid for anyone to make up. Like, if I had to sit down and come up with a fake story to trash Mark Driscoll, it would not be this. Like, it would be something far more believable. And that just shows how stupid this all is. Like, in, but when I say I would make something more believable, it's because this isn't even believable to me, even though I'm the one that lived through it. It's all true. It's just so stupid that I it, I don't even want to believe it sometimes that Mark did all of this. And he even knows it's true. And one of the things I will talk about is how he's constantly lying about what's happening and he's constantly changing his story. And everyone's saying, oh, well, this didn't happen. There's two sides to a story. First of all, there isn't two sides to a story when one of the sides is abusive. There isn't. And, and second of all, um, he, he's constantly changing the story. And co- multiple news reporters and people have reached out to Mark. Why isn't he commenting? If his story is so different, and if he's the victim here and he's being attacked, why won't he come out and make episodes? Or, or not, it doesn't have to be a podcast. That's what I'm doing. Why doesn't he release a statement if this isn't true? It's because he's cowarding away from it. He's avoiding what, what is happening and what did happen, and he's just not going to speak about it. I'm 15 years old, and I have a man enough to come on here and make a podcast telling everyone what happened, because I'm not a little Marco Driscoll failed Mars Hill pastor who sits behind uh, a wall with 20 bodyguards thinking that he's doing something, thinking that he's tough, kicking people out of his church for the stupidest reasons possible. So if you even deny that I worked there or whatever, here's a picture on the screen, literally a picture of me and Mark at a staff dinner party, and other people are blurred out, uh, just because I, honestly, I don't feel like messaging everyone and saying, hey, can I put your picture up? But um, last episode is doing good. I'm not profiting off of this. I'm not doing it for attention. The only attention I want is to Mark and, and negative attention because I want people to see what's happening at his church. No, I don't want the church to fail. Obviously, God has done things there, and I wish that Mark would repent. But he didn't. He didn't at before. He didn't at Mars Hill. He didn't after Mars Hill, and he hasn't now. And he's not going to, most likely. So, honestly, I don't want to see his church fail. But unfortunately, that's what's happening. It already is happening, and it was going to happen, uh, whether or not what happened in my family happened or not, whether whether that you know went on. But there's a lot to get into. The title is just exposing Mark, pretty much the truth about Mark Triscoll. So number one, which we kind of talked about last time. Mark spent thousands monitoring our family to find out that we go to church. It's it's true, yes. If you tied to the Trinity Church, your money went to watching my family. They had security guards. You had Mr. Uh, uh, Caleb Glennie, head security guard there on his uh, microphone. Hey, uh, Eagle One, uh, yeah, copy. Um, the Manuelis, yeah, on the I-17, uh, heading down uh, 65 miles per hour. Yeah, copy. Uh, we're going to switch the vehicles now. No. Okay, Caleb, no. It's just stop trying to be act tough. That that's literally what they were doing. And you have Landon Chase there, also thinks he's a pastor. He's the pastor of fun, more like the pastor of doing everything wrong and abusing kids in his junior internship. I like to call it junior slave internship or junior slave ship, whatever you want to call it. You have Landon on there. Hey, uh, tell us when uh, Eagle One gets gets back. And then like they're using all this lingo. Like you guys aren't tough. So that's that. I won't even get into that. Second, which I kind of talked about already, Mark is constantly lying about what happened. He told the story kind of how it was at first. He kind of told the staff the real story, except obviously he made it. Obviously, he wasn't going to go and tell the real story like he made it. So his side seemed right, which you can do in every argument. Both sides will seem right, uh, depending on how the person tells it. So now he's realizing how how stupid it sounded. And he's telling a complete different story to all the staff. Because I can just imagine him being like, wait, this story is so stupid. 
like I can't believe what I did. I have to tell them a different story because now tons of staff members are leaving and tons are already speaking out and more and more will be speaking out as their NDAs are released because yes, a church has to give out NDAs because that's what a church should do. Right, Mark? Um, he would know about giving out NDAs. Um, next, Mark, this is a new article. Mark said he was going to pay for a honeymoon and with his own money. I witnessed this. This was at the staff dinner party. In the picture that I showed, of the proof I worked with Mark, that same staff dinner party, I was sitting with my brother Joey and Kalen, and the big, powerful king, Mark Driscoll, who thinks he's uh, Jesus on earth right now, he comes up he comes up to us and he's talking to Joey about their wedding coming up and he's like, Listen, I want to pay for your honeymoon. And Joey's like, No, I can't do that. And Mark was like, No, let me, me, M E, me pay for it. I'll pay for your honeymoon. So Joey uh, didn't really want to accept it because Joey's nice and you know, Mark seemed really nice in this moment. I want to pay for your honeymoon. He never said the church, he said himself. All right. So um, basically that's the only part I saw. I didn't, uh, I won't say the re- the story, the full story is on the news uh, website, which I'll link in the description, but I guess they didn't pay it on time or didn't give the money when they said they were going to, and Joey ended up actually paying for it um, after they finally agreed, like, yeah, I guess we'll let you pay for it, and they even stayed at a cheap hotel because they felt bad, but I don't know too much about that part, but all I do know, which they have proof of this too, is that once Mark finally sent the check, it was from the Trinity Church. It wasn't from Mark. It was from the Trinity Church, which means the Trinity Church is a nonprofit uh, organization, which means they get their money from tithes, money that people donate. So not only did you pay for watching my family, uh, you know, go to church, you paid for a honeymoon. And now you may think, oh, well, that's not too bad. It's a honeymoon. Well, yeah, if, but Mark, first of all, Mark said he was going to pay for it by himself. And second of all, if he's paying for honeymoons with the church's money, what else is he paying for? You know, how is he going on vacation uh, every other week, you know, during the week? And I, that's not like really public, but I had ways that I knew that stuff, uh, which I'm not getting into, but like I, I knew that stuff and they went on vacation a lot, their family. So, you know, how is he paying for that? Obviously, he makes a lot as a pastor, but he's also in charge of the finances at the church. And I think he just takes whatever he wants because he has no elders to, you know, choose how much he gets paid and what happens with the church money, church's money. He chooses that. And next, speaking about money, is him paying junior interns, slave, slaves, junior slaves under the table. He made us... I didn't even think about this until recently. It was so long ago. But we literally had to sign a contract at the beginning of the junior internship to be paid under the table by him. Our parents were never involved in this. My dad didn't even know until recently that we had to sign a contract. Like, they never told anyone. But we literally did have to sign a contract and turn it in. And we were treated basically as adults. We were paid in gift cards, $200 a month for hours of work. It wasn't even $0.50 an hour for what we did. Interns... Normal interns were paid $500 a month, which is for like 50 hours of work a week, uh, sometimes even more than that. And we would be there for a long time. I mean, I put my time into that. I mean, uh, some days when I should have been in school, I was there from 8.30 in the morning to 9.30 at night. That's a long day. That's not even legal in Arizona for a kid to work that much on a school day. So... That's that, uh, underpaying junior interns and underpaying normal interns. And there's a lot you can go into that. You can go into Landon Chase, uh, who runs the internship, being a complete, you know, bullied every, everyone. You know, it's completely fine to, like, joke around, but get to a point where he's screaming at people and threatening to fire them for no reason. And then you have, uh, and he fired me because I served in the wrong area, which is a complete other story. I don't even know if that's even been published. There's a lot that happened that wasn't even published on here but yeah i mean i feel like that's a lot of information in in this video that i just gave out so i think i'll save the rest for um some other videos but we got one here i've been keeping up with the trinity cult account on instagram that's where i got the stuff from the last video um i guess they're former mars hill members that have attended trinity and you know they're keeping up with everything going on here 
and uh, they only post stuff that has been confirmed. So, I mean, if you want to keep up with, like, new articles and stuff, go there. And all these people releasing articles are all trusted. It's all been cleared. It's not my own. It's not, I'm not the only, we're not the only family that they're talking to. You know, in the new articles, there's former security members. There's, you know, there's screenshots. There's pictures of checks, pictures of NDAs, pictures of so much stuff from there. That just proves all this is true. So, guys, make the decision on your own. But, I mean... Every Christian should be able to agree that what Mark's doing is not at all uh, justified and not at all godly. And, I mean, that's, it's sad, but it's true. So, uh, Mark Driscoll, I know that your staff stalks me, and I know that you guys, um, you know, love to watch my stuff and look at my stories. John Wellnick, security guard there, always loves to look at my stuff. Um, <laughs> it's, it's funny that they, they think I don't know that they're stalking me. But, I mean, it's fine. I mean, they they have a thing for 15-year-olds, I guess. I mean, Brandon Anderson likes to lock 15-year-olds in his office, and their security guards like to stalk me and look at everything I post. So, honestly, I'm fine with that. I mean, I like getting attention from them. But um, the attention should be on them, though. So, it'll happen soon. Their church is, uh, you know, falling already. People are leaving. And it's, I don't know, it's part of God's plan, I guess. Um so yeah, uh, just watch out. Make sure you're not in a cult once again. And if you follow the X Mars Hills failed pastor, Marco Driscoll, be careful because he's a false teacher. He's a cult leader and a liar and a pirate. And it makes sense because that's what his roots are. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Until next time, stay happy.